Hi students, welcome to Sunil's tutorial. I'm Sunil Mirwani and today we'll be doing this chapter called as Nature of Chemical Bonds. Let's see the formation of boron trifluoride. Formation of boron trifluoride, PF3. Right? Now, boron trifluoride. Let's keep our format same. First thing, molecular formula. Molecular formula of boron trifluoride is BF3, right? Then fluorine, electron fluorine electronic configuration. Boron electronic configuration. Boron electronic. Configuration is going to be boron. Atomic number is 5. So 1 is 2, 2 is 2, 2 P1. That's my electronic configuration of boron. Once you have the electronic configuration of boron, let's see the box diagram. Ground state. Ground state is going to be 1s2, 2s2, 2p1, 1s, 2s, 2p, x, y, and z. So this is going to be the electronic configuration of boron. Right? Now, will boron go into the excited state? Yes. It will go into excited state. Why will it go into the excited state? Because it has an empty orbital. If a given atom has an empty orbital, then it will go into the excited state. So the excited state will be 1s2, 2s, and 2p. 2s and 2p. What is excited state? During the process of the reaction, the reaction being exothermic, some amount of energy of that exothermic reaction is going to be used to push one electron from 2s orbital to 2p y orbital. This is going to be an excited state. Now, it has three half-filled orbitals. As per valency bond theory, the half-filled orbitals take part in chemical reaction. The next step is going to be hybridization. Hybridization 1s orbital will combine with 2p orbitals to form sp3 hybrid orbitals. 1s orbital will combine with 2p orbitals. sp2, not sp3, sorry. sp2. This is sp2 hybrid orbital. So, this is going to be the hybridization that will take place. Right? Once the hybridization takes place, the next thing let's see the overlap. Overlap. Boron trifluoride. So boron is going to be combining with fluorine. Fluorine. This is going to be fluorine. You will have three atoms of fluorine. This is along x axis, y axis and Z axis. Right? This is the unhybridized uh, fluorine atom which will combine with sp3 hybrid orbitals. So this is going to be my sp3 hybrid orbital. Now since it has to have maximum symmetry and distance, the bond angle so that the three orbitals are at maximum distance from each other, very easily understood, is going to be 120 degree. Right? So this is my sp3 this is the lobe where the electron density changes so this is the other half of the lobe so this is the 2p orbital of fluorine and this is sp2 hybrid orbital of boron
right? You will have this combining. Once the overlap takes place, you will have. Fluorine here, fluorine here, and fluorine here. Right? So this is one overlap here, this is one overlap here, this is one overlap here. The bond angle here is going to be 120 degree. This is going to be the structure of S. This is going to be SP2P overlap. SP2P overlap. Right? Geometry. The geometry of this. Now, all of them are at 120 degrees. So this is going to be triangular geometry where all of them are going to be at 120 degrees. So boron in the center and you will have chlorine that is going to connect to this. And this bond angle is going to be 120 degrees. 120 degree chlorine at the three corners. This is what is going to be the geometry, and this is called as trigonal planar geometry. Trigonal <coughs> planar geometry. So that is the formation of boron trifluoride. Fine, do we get this thing here? Here the bond is going to be sigma bond. Question: How do I know that this is sigma bond? Obviously, you can see there is actual overlapping. Only when there is lateral overlapping, there is fire bond. Here, there is actual overlapping. That means it has to be sigma bond. Right? So, this was sp2 hybridization. Next thing that we will see is sp hybridization. sp hybridization. Right? What is. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. What is SP hybridization? As we already know that hybridization is nothing but the mixing and recasting of orbitals to have a new orbital that has energy levels similar to the original orbitals having maximum symmetry in it. Right? Here one S orbital will combine with one P orbital to form SP hybrid orbital. One S orbital will combine with one P orbital to form sp hybrid orbital. Let's write the definition now. If they tell you to define sp hybridization, it is nothing but the mixing and recasting of one s and one p orbital of the same atom. having nearly equal energy having nearly equal energy into a new set of to a new set of two equivalent hybrid orbitals having maximum symmetry equal energy and definite orientation that is what is sp hybridization let's try to understand this with an open example let's see the formation of acetylene Formation of acetylene. Acetylene, molecular formula. Is C2H2. That's the molecular formula of acetylene. Carbon. Electronic configuration of carbon. Carbon. Electronic. 
spectrum on the configuration. Carbon electronic configuration, we've already done this multiple number of times. It's going to be nothing but 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Right? Let's see the box diagram. Ground state. Ground state, the diagram will be like this. 1s, 2s, 2p. Right? This is going to be the ground state diagram 2p2. Right? 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Remember that the electrons get filled in one direction before they get filled in the other direction. Will this go into the excited state? Yes. Why do I know it will go into excited state? Because it has an empty orbital. Right? If there is an empty orbital, that means the given atom will go into the excited state. So the excited state for this. is 1s, 2s and 2p, 1s, 2s, 2p. Excited state means during the chemical reaction, the chemical reaction being exothermic in nature, certain amount of energy which is released is going to be used to push an electron from 2s orbital to 2pz orbital. So this is going to be the excited state. There are four half-filled orbitals. The next thing is hybridization. Now we have something interesting. Now if you remember your methane, methane was CH4. One carbon atom was combining with four hydrogen atom. Therefore, there were four total there were five number of total there were five atoms that were com combining together to form a compound which would give rise to some amount of energy, exothermic energy some amount of energy would be released. The next compound that we have seen was ethylene, which was C2H4, right? Where each carbon atom, instead of combining with four hydrogen atoms, was combining only with two hydrogen atoms. And at that point of time, I told you that since the carbon atom is combining with less number of hydrogen atoms, less amount of energy is given out. In methane, one carbon atom was combining with four hydrogen atoms, therefore, certain amount of energy was given out. In Italy, one carbon atom was combining with two hydrogen atoms, therefore again, less amount of energy was given out. Here, in acetylene, one carbon atom is combining with only one hydrogen atom. That means very less amount of energy is going to be given out. Out of that also, some amount of energy is going to be utilized to bring the atom into the excited state. So you have very limited amount of energy remaining. That limited amount of energy is used for mixing and recasting. That energy is not sufficient for mixing all the orbitals. Hence, in this case, what will happen is only one s orbital will combine with one p orbital. One s orbital will combine with one p orbital, and the y, 2p, y, and z will remain unhybridized. This is one s, this is sp hybrid orbital and this is 2p, y and z. You could definitely ask me the question. Sir, carbon atom was same. In methane you did sp3 hybridization. In ethylene you did sp2 hybridization. And with the same carbon atom, in acetylene you are doing sp hybridization. Why? The difference. The difference is not because of the atom. The difference is because of the amount of energy released during exothermic reaction. Do you understand why you have a difference? So this is going to be my sp hybrid orbital, right? Now, so that's my hybridization. Once hybridization takes place, let's see the overlap. Overlap. This is my hydrogen atom. This is s orbital of hydrogen. Right? Two atoms of this will combine with two hybrid atoms which are going to be placed at maximum distance from each other. 
right? Where the bond angle between them is going to be 180 degree. This is along x axis, there is nothing along y or z axis, right? You will have two such carbon atoms. This is sp hybrid orbital of carbon atom. You will have overlapping taking place. Once overlapping takes place, this is a carbon atom, which will combine with one hydrogen atom here, which will combine with one hydrogen atom here. This is the overlap here. This is hydrogen, carbon, hydrogen. Right? Do we get this in here? So, now, you have two carbon atoms. So, and you also have the unhybridized orbital. Wait, wait, I didn't show you the unhybridized orbital. Give me a sec. I'll just show you the unhybridized orbital also. This one is the hybrid orbital. Now, the unhybridized orbital, I told you, will remain perpendicular to the hybridized orbital. That means this is going to be my 2PY and this is going to be my 2PZ. This is X axis, this is Y axis and this is Z axis. Right? And this is SP hybrid carbon atom. Right? Now, how will the overlap take place? First, let's do the overlap of carbon atom. This is a carbon atom, right? We'll combine with another carbon atom. This is the sigma bond form here. Here you will have hydrogen atom. Here you will have hydrogen atom. This is the s orbital of hydrogen. This is the overlap of hydrogen that you have here. Why do we get this in here? So this is hydrogen, hydrogen and these are your two carbon atoms. Right? Now there is going to be a sigma bond all along. Now the, this is your Y and this is Z. Again this is Y here and this is Z here. Now the Y orbital is going to be parallel. The Y orbital of the first carbon atom will be parallel to the Y orbital of the second carbon atom. Therefore, it will exert some force of attraction on it. Lateral force of attraction, which I'm going to show with the red lines here. Right? Similarly, the Z orbital is going to exert some force of attraction on the Z orbital, which I'm showing with black lines here. that z orbital exerting force of attraction on z orbital both these are lateral forces of attraction there is no actual overlapping that is going to take place here there is going to be some lateral force of attraction between the y orbital of the two carbon atoms and the z orbital of two carbon atoms so because of this lateral force of attraction you will have this is overlap you will have a geometry wherein you will have carbon carbon one is the sigma bond, which is formed due to the actual overlapping, and there are two pi, pi bonds which are going to be formed. These are the two pi bonds which are formed by lateral overlapping, which connects to a hydrogen here, hydrogen here. So this is your sigma bond, first one, and the other two are pi bonds. And here again you have a sigma and a sigma bond, right? The bond angle remains 180 degree, right? The bond angle remains 180 degrees. Right? This is called as a linear geometry. So this is how your acetylene molecule would look like. Why right? do we get this thing here? Next, let's see the formation of 
beryllium difluoride. Formation of beryllium difluoride. Right? Molecular formula. is BF2. Molecular formula is BF2. Now, beryllium. Electronic configuration. Electronic configuration of beryllium is going to be 1s2, 2s2. That's the electronic configuration of beryllium. Fine. Let's see the box diagram for this. Box diagram. Ground state. Ground state, this is 1s and this is 2s. And this is 2p which is completely empty. Right? That's the ground state electronic configuration of beryllium. Will this go into excited state? Yes. It has an empty orbital, therefore it will go into the excited state. Will this go into excited state? Yes, this will go into excited state. This will have electronic configuration 1s, 2s and 2p. 1s, 2s, 2p. X, Y, Z. Right? That was going to be the excited state for this. Next, hybridization. One S orbital will combine with one P orbital to form S P hybrid orbital. This is going to be one S. And this is sp hybrid orbital. So that is going to be the hybridization. Let's see the overlap. Overlap, you have fluorine. So let's draw fluorine. This is going to be your 2p orbital of fluorine this is along x axis this is along y axis and this is along z axis fine do we get this in here now this is going to combine with beryllium there is no unhybridized orbital here so this is going to be along x axis the bond angle here is going to be 180 degrees right so this is your beryllium sp hybrid orbital of beryllium mm -hmm. sp hybrid orbital of beryllium right combines together beryllium difluoride so first of all let me draw beryllium will combine with fluorine on either side. The bond angle still remains 180 degree. So this is how beryllium difluoride would look like. Here you have actual overlapping and actual overlapping. Both are sigma bonds. Fine, do we get this thing here? So this is SPP overlap. Right? Geometry. Geometry, it's going to have a diagonal linear geometry. You will have, you have beryllium, fluorine, fluorine with sigma bonds and sigma bonds. So this is going to be called as diagonal linear geometry. 
That's the formation of barium difluoride. Right? That finishes this chapter. We will stop this here for the day. Thank you very much.